Few players have gone so back and forth in terms of fan popularity as much as Paul George of the Los Angeles Clippers. From the up-and-coming superstar of that gritty and tough Pacers team, to an MVP candidate with OKC, to Pandemic P with the notoriously mocked 2020 Clippers, to back to his superstar stock in his second year with the team, George has faced a lot of ups and downs. But as he's ascended into superstar level, one thing remains constant, his tireless work towards keeping his body healthy and in peak shape. Today we're going to be talking about Paul George's insane diet and workout. Before we get started, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe button below so you can help us grow this channel. Without further ado, let's talk PG-13. So let's take it all the way back to his Indiana Pacers day. On one of the most underrated teams of the decade, George asserted himself just a few years into the league as a star on that powerhouse team. With a great physical size at 6'8", 220 pounds, along with a sweet shooting touch and a propensity to rise higher than the rest, George was simply electric. That physicality and skill on the court made the Pacers a sneaky contender for several years during the early part of the decade, and if it weren't for a pesky guy by the name of LeBron James down in Miami, that Pacers squad had a great chance of making the NBA Finals. Still, all was looking up for Paul George and the Pacers until a devastating injury set everything back. In 2014, during a blue and white game for Team USA, George went up for a chase down block and landed horribly on the bottom of the hoop, breaking his tibula and fibula in a particularly gruesome way. It was the type of of injury that could have ended a career not too many years ago. And ever since that point, George knew that he wasn't invincible and would have to start working on his body and his recovery process harder than ever. In an interview with GQ, George talked about the realization, saying, I realized I needed to take care of my body. As I get older, I was seeing more wear and tear. Also, when I'm done playing the game, I want to be able to do normal things and not hurt from them. With that mindset, PG started with the very first step, a revamped diet, assuring better recovery time not just from his injury, but when he would finally be returning to play again. So the first thing he did was hire a personal chef. Being naturally athletic, George had never really worried about his nutrition much. But with the fear of further injury on his mind, he knew he had to cut down on some of his weight, making sure he had safer landings when he would return to flying towards the rim. So when breakfast time rolls around, PG keeps it light. Typically, he has an espresso coffee, a piece of avocado toast, and a smoothie packed with a variety of fruits and vegetables. Coming off his terrible injury, he's also started taking protein supplements in an attempt to strengthen up his body for his return, but nowadays he's weaning off those supplements in an attempt to keep it more of a natural diet. For the rest of the day, George continues to keep his diet pretty light. He attempts to get as many veggies in his diet throughout the day as he can, so lunch is typically a salad with some light fish. And because he trains in the afternoon, he has to snack between lunch and dinner, usually taking the form of some more greens, cashews, sunflower seeds, or more fruit. And then because he's such a large guy, he puts some heavier proteins in his diet, usually some chicken or even a big steak. He'll even use dinner as his cheat meal sometimes, opting for a big plate of homemade spaghetti and meatballs. And on the rarer occasions, he'll even use that cheat meal on one of his favorites, fried chicken. But he's vowed to make it a once in a while thing to ensure that he stays lighter on that day. And for the most part, that's it for the day. PG said he's not much of a dessert guy. He'll sometimes go for some chocolate cake or chocolate chip cookies, but it's not something he even craves much anymore. This kind of regimented diet is something young Paul George never thought he would have to do. That's why when GQ asked if this kind of recovery was always on his mind, he said, When I was young, definitely not. I didn't believe in being sore. I thought I was just going to be elite forever. But then you look at the guys that have longevity like LeBron and the amount of work he puts into his body and the recovery that he does. I was at a crossroads. So even though George has faced some injury this year, he certainly knows it's not his diet that's at fault. Working out has always been important for Paul George. As one of the stronger wings in the league, he used his hard work and dedication to help him barrel towards the rim and stop some of the league's best wing scorers. And obviously this year and this offseason was quite a unique occasion. So much of the player's work ethic was on their own initiative, so coming off such a disappointment stint in the bubble, George got right to work looking to redeem himself into the first team all-caliber player he was two years prior. For PG, it all starts with on-the-court drills. His playstyle has had to transform so much during his transition to LA, so he ensures his workouts reflect that. While Kawhi is excellent on the offensive end, he's not necessarily the rim threat that Westbrook was in OKC, meaning defenses will sag off the perimeter less and PG will have to work harder for his shot. So the first thing he does is working on those dribble handoffs and jumpers along with isolation-focused three-point scoring. 
The focus on these drills are very specific on the footwork, helping George on his step back, side steps, and hesitations that are going to get him more room for himself. This work has proven itself as George is shooting a career high 44% beyond the arc this season. But in order to retain his abilities as a three level scorer, the drills work their way in off the three point line, ending at the rim with inside and outside hand finishes. Then it's on to blending it all together, getting shots up all over the court. After his on-court workouts, PG heads home where he'll eat and meet Ryan Capretta, his strength and conditioning coach, to begin his workout in the comfort of his own home. George is so committed to the at-home workout that he's invested a large stake in the company Tonal, which has given him the ability to complete facility-like workouts in his own home. But before he starts on anything intense, he completes the basics, doing sets of push-ups, planks, side planks, light dumbbell flies, and of course plenty of stretching. Then the medicine ball comes into play. With an elastic band around his legs to improve his stance, he does the medicine ball shuffles, passes, and squats. He then starts doing more push-ups with the medicine ball under one of his hands, testing his balance as well as his strengths. After the medicine ball workouts, he moves on to the more intense stuff, doing dumbbell presses, dumbbell rows, dumbbell dynamic lunges, making emphasis on his form, and heavy resistant band rip-throughs. Then it's on to a bunch of inverted rows on his tonal equipment and some medicine ball wall sits. All stuff that is grueling the longer you go at it, and of course, PG is going hard. All of these workouts have made PG one of the sturdiest wings in the league, leading him to four all-defensive team honors. In a league that's both praised and given up on PG-13, fans should be rest assured that he's at least giving his all at every opportunity. Now it's time to see if he and Kawhi Leonard could lead the Clippers to their very first championship banner. That's it for today. What's your opinion on Paul George? Let us know in the comments below, and don't forget to like and hit that bell button below so you can help us grow this channel. Have an awesome day!